to my first big part. I was just commenting to a friend of mine today. The biggest hero is always the guy who first dares to stand up alone and say no. And we have such a person here today in Senator Inhofe from Oklahoma. Last October, last October when this nation was being railroaded like a bunch of lemmings off the cliff uh, over a matter called TARP, it was Senator Imhoff who was the first guy to stand up and say no, who led the opposition for understood it was unnecessary, too big, too costly, and dangerous to the safety and security of the American economy. And he was our champion then, and he's a, uh, on the question of... Uh, uh, of cap and trade. He's the first guy to understand it best, to dare to speak up, to defy all the axioms of political correctness, and to tell the truth on this subject. And he is today our greatest expert. And to me, when I look at the House and the Senate, and I look for where is the courage, where is the devotion to freedom, liberty, the genius of the American Constitution, and the promise of liberty for ourselves and our posterity, there's no greater champion for who we are and what we treasure than our Senator Imhoff from Oklahoma. Thank you, Dick. Well, I do want to say something about, about Dick, and I'll, I'll do that in a minute, but, but two things first, three things first. Uh, Al uh, Gerhardt, where are you? Okay, this is great. Uh, all of you, there you are. All right, get with all the Oklahoma people. Get with him. You're coming to my office at 3 o'clock today, all right? Anyone else who wants to come, you can come too. It's not that big. But, uh, uh, the second thing is, uh, my subject is cap and trade. And uh, I, that's, that's, I, it's been my subject for, let's see, since 1997 now. But I have to say this about last night. Dick Army knows, because he's been a member of the club over there and, and has sat through a lot of the speeches, the joint sessions, like we did last night. Most of the members try to position themselves so that the cameras will see them. But I position myself in the same seat. I've been in the same seat since Ronald Reagan's last uh, State of the Union message. And that's where I'm the closest, so you can really see him way over the side where the cameras can't see, but you can get the expression. I'll tell you, last night what I observed was a new sense of arrogance and defiance I've never seen before. To tell the American people, you know, you're going to do this. Anyone criticizing this program, anyone misrepresenting it, we're going to get you, you know, that type of thing. You don't do that. And I have to keep reminding you, no matter what you heard last night, the public option, the government option is still there, and that's socialized medicine. Now, enough of that. Let me say this about uh, Dick Army. I, you know, this guy, and I, I, those of you who know me know that I don't blow smoke at people. There's no one I admire as much that I served with when I was in the House of Representatives than Dick Army. He never did something just to, for, for himself, and he stuck with his causes. Every other one, every once in a while, would kind of go off to the side, and uh, Dick Army never did that. So, Dick, I love you, and thanks for keeping this thing alive and for bringing up the $700 billion bailout, which I think will probably go down in history as the most onerous vote in the 220-year history of the United States Senate. No, enough of that. Uh, back when Republicans were a majority, I was the chairman of the Environment and Public Works Committee. Now, you might remember back in 1997, it was Al Gore who went to the big meeting. He brought back Kyoto. He signed Kyoto. And he was going to give that to the Senate for ratification. And we looked at that and we thought, you know, this, this is not uh, going to work. They don't have the votes to do it. But I have to tell you this. Confession is good for the soul. I say to my good friend Dick Army, there was a time when I actually believed that man-made gases caused global warming because everybody said it did. Until we found out from the Wharton School of Economics, who, speaking of economics, I want you to know that Dick Army over here is an economist, and he had to come to Oklahoma University to get his degree, but that's all right. He's a, 
Uh, but when the Wharton School of Economics came out and said that the cost of this, if we were to ratify the Kyoto Treaty and live by its emission requirements, would be somewhere between 300 and 350 billion dollars a year. Well, then I happen to remember, and you remember it well, Dick, when we had the Clinton-Gore tax increase of 1993 increased everything, inheritance tax, uh, uh, all, all taxes across the board. That was $32 billion a year. So this is 10 times greater than that tax increase. So I thought, let's at least check the science. Anyway, there's a long story that goes with it. We checked the science, found out that this, like many other bad ideas that come to America, all started in the United Nations. The United Nations have been offended because there are some of us who now and then was to get a resolution and send it. If you don't do these, quit doing these un-American things, we're going to withhold your funds, and they don't want to be accountable to anyone, how best to be not accountable, have a big global tax, and, and be able to do it that way. Well, that's the way this whole thing started. Then it went out to Hollywood, the Hollywood elitists, the, uh, the uh, MoveOn.org, George Soros, Michael Moore, and that whole crowd, they're the ones who want to run everyone else's life, and they kind of perpetuated this thing. And they're the ones who put the money in the campaigns. Well, now you pass. Oh, by the way, this this week marks the anniversary. It was six years ago this week, Dick, that I made this statement at uh, Milan, Italy, I believe it was, when they're having the big uh, UN meeting, that the notion that man-made gases, anthropogenic gases, CO2, methane, cause global warming, is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. <laughs> and it was lonely. Lonely for all those years. You remember Heidi Cullum with the weather uh, station who said that we ought to decertify any meteorologist who doesn't agree with me on global warming. Well, anyway, people realize now that it's, it, it, it is a hoax. And let me just share two things with you, and then I'll sit down and respond to your questions. One is that when the new director was appointed of the Environmental Protection Agency, Lisa Jackson, I asked her this question that right after she was confirmed. I said, Administrator Jackson, if we were to pass the same bill that passed in the House of Representatives, would that have a net decrease in CO2 emissions? And she thought for a minute and she said, no. Well, the logic is there. It would actually have an effect of increasing because as we send our jobs overseas to places where they don't have emission requirements, like India and like China and Mexico and other places, it would have a net increase of CO2. It would not decrease it. Even the administrator of the EPA says it. Secondly, you probably saw last night, your good friend Dick Durbin made a statement. He said, it looks like we're not going to be able to, because of the health care, get around to cap and trade this year. Uh, what he's doing, now he hasn't thrown in the towel yet. And the reason he gave is not the real reason. The real reason is they don't have the votes. They might have had a few more votes before the August recess, but during the August recess, people realized what this was. So the votes aren't there. Um, bless her heart, Barbara Boxer's in denial now. She still thinks that it's going to be... Anyone here from California? Yeah, yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that's what's going on right now. Uh, these panelists are great. They've given us material, and, and we've shared material. This great hoax that has perpetrated the American people uh, is not going to become a reality. We are going to defeat it.